So the web is going to be able to look at planets that we've discovered around distant stars. In the vast puzzle of our universe, the James Webb Telescope is finding pieces we didn't even know existed, shaking up everything we thought we knew. Could our laws of physics be in for a rethink? Is our universe textbook due for an update? Renowned physicist Brian Cox is stepping up to share his thoughts on these earth-shaking revelations. Join us as we're about to journey through the astonishing wonders of the cosmos like never before. Stay tuned and prepare for a cosmic voyage of discovery. Okay, are you ready for a cosmic story? Picture it, Christmas Day 2021. While most of us were unwrapping gifts and sipping hot chocolate, the world of astronomy was getting the biggest present of all the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short. And let us tell you, this isn't your run-of-the-mill telescope. It's the biggest, baddest optical telescope we've ever put in space. It's packing a colossal primary mirror that's 6.5 meters across. Now, the JWST isn't just hanging out up there for the view. Its mission? To cast its super-powered gaze back in time, studying the first galaxies that appeared in our universe. It's like a cosmic detective, unraveling mysteries about the birth of stars and planets. How does it do all that? Well, it's kitted out with four scientific instruments. There's the Near Infrared Camera, or NIR Cam, the Near Infrared Spectrograph, also known as for NIR Spec, the Mid Infrared Instrument, shortened for MIRI, and the Fine Guidance Sensor Near Infrared Imager and Slit Less Spectrograph, aka FGS Nearest. It's a mouthful, we know. But these are the tools it uses to peek into the atmospheres of distant exoplanets. And here's something that'll blow your mind. The JWST is so far out in space, orbiting around the Sun, that it's about 930,000 miles away from Earth. And at that distance, things get chilly. We are talking minus 223 degrees Celsius kind of chilly. Now this impressive mission isn't a solo act. It's the result of an epic collaboration between NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember the JWST is out there, unveiling the mysteries of our cosmos. Isn't that something? You know how we're always wondering if we're alone in the universe? Well, we've been doing more than just wondering. We've been peeking into the celestial depths with telescopes, uncovering secrets hidden light years away. Let's take a journey through the cosmos, shall we? Our destination, TRAPPIST-1b, an exoplanet that's been a real game-changer in our cosmic understanding. So first off, what's TRAPPIST-1b? It's a super-Earth exoplanet, which is essentially an astronomy way of saying it's kind of like Earth. But, well, super. It's not Superman or anything, but it is larger than our home planet. In fact, it's about 1.37 times the mass of Earth, and 1.12 times the radius. But despite its size, it's still smaller than the likes of Uranus and Neptune, our system's ice giants. Now where is this fascinating world? It's part of a family of seven rocky planets, all orbiting a pretty unique star called TRAPPIST-1. And where's that, you ask? It's in the constellation of Aquarius, about 40 light years away from us. That's pretty far by our standards, but in cosmic terms, it's almost like being neighbors. The way TRAPPIST-1b was discovered is quite a fascinating story, too. A team of astronomers, peering through the lens of the Transiting Planets and Planetesimals Small Telescope, or TRAPPIST for short, based in Chile, first spotted it in 2016. This was also made possible with the help of several other ground and space-based telescopes. One interesting aspect of TRAPPIST-1b is how close it is to its star. It orbits at a distance of only 0.0115 astronomical units. If that seems like gibberish, imagine it this way. It's around 30 times closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun. Because of this, it whips around its star in a super-fast orbit, completing one cycle every 1.5 days. This speed means the planet is tidally locked, which is just a fancy way of saying one side always faces the star while the other side constantly faces the cold void of space. Now this super-close orbit means that TRAPPIST-1b gets quite the suntan. 
It receives about four times as much radiation as Earth gets from the sun. As a result, the planet is pretty toasty. If you were standing on the surface, which by the way, you really wouldn't want to do, the temperature would be around 227 degrees Celsius or 440 degrees Fahrenheit. The James Webb Space Telescope played a crucial role in learning about TRAPPIST-1b's temperature. It used its impressive MIRON to detect the faint mid-infrared light from the planet, something that was extremely challenging given that the planet is a lot dimmer and closer to its star. But by employing a special technique called coronagraphy, the telescope managed to block out the majority of the starlight and reveal the planet's signal. By measuring the thermal emission of the planet, which is essentially the heat energy given off in the form of infrared light, scientists were able to directly measure the temperature of this rocky exoplanet for the first time. Their measurements also suggested that TRAPPIST-1b doesn't have a significant atmosphere. This could be because it either lost its original atmosphere due to the star's intense stellar winds and ultraviolet radiation, or maybe it never had one in the first place due to its formation history. The discovery of TRAPPIST-1b along with its six sister planets, was nothing short of a revelation in the field of exoplanet research. It showed that rocky planets could form around very low-mass stars, which are the most common types of stars in our galaxy. This opened up new possibilities for studying the diversity and evolution of planetary systems, as well as potential signs of life on other worlds. But that's not the only insane discovery. And some of these discoveries are making us question everything we have ever known. Two galaxies have been causing quite a stir in the world of cosmology. Glass Z12 and Glass Z10, two truly extraordinary galaxies, are like cosmic celebrities, really, given they're among the most distant and luminous galaxies we've ever seen. They date back to mere 350 and 450 million years after the Big Bang. Now, you might be wondering who or what found these galaxies. The answer is the James Webb Space Telescope, which is quite a marvel. It discovered Glass Z12 and Glass Z10 in July 2022, thanks to a program called the GRISM Lens Amplified Survey from Space, also known as GLASS. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? But it's basically a program that uses something called gravitational lensing to magnify the light from extremely distant galaxies. So what is this gravitational lensing thing all about? Well, it's a bit like using a magnifying glass, but instead of glass, you're using the gravity of massive galaxy clusters to enlarge or magnify the light from galaxies located way, way in the background. In this case, one of these magnifying glasses is Abel 2744, also known as Pandora's Cluster. This cluster is located about a staggering 3.5 billion light years away. Now, the JWST images of Abel 2744 revealed two seemingly insignificant little red dots among a sea of hundreds of other galaxies. But these red dots were anything but insignificant. They indicated that these galaxies were extremely far away and that their light had been stretched by the expansion of the universe into the infrared part of the spectrum. To figure out just how far away these galaxies were, Astronomers estimated something called their photometric redshifts, which is a bit of a complicated term that basically refers to an estimation of how far away something is based on its color. It turned out that the estimated redshifts for glass Z12 and glass Z10 were about 12.4 and 10.5 respectively. Now these numbers might not mean much to us, but in astronomy speak, they translate into distances of approximately 13.6 and 13.4 billion light years. In other words, when we look at these galaxies, we're looking at light that has traveled for about 350 and 450 million years after the Big Bang. Mind-blowing, isn't it? To confirm these redshifts and distances, the astronomers needed to do something called spectroscopic observations, which is essentially a fancy way of saying they needed to measure the wavelengths of specific emission lines from the galaxies. For this, they turned to the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, also called the ALMA, a collection of radio telescopes based in Chile. These guys detected an emission line associated with something called doubly ionized oxygen at 258.7 gigahertz from Glass Z. 
This line confirmed that Glass Z12 has a spectroscopic redshift of 12.117, making it one of the earliest and most distant galaxies we've ever discovered. The ALMA observations also detected a fainter emission line from Glass Z10 at 290 GHz, suggesting a redshift of about 10.4, but this line still needs a little bit more work to confirm. These celestial bodies are not just impressive because of their age and distance from us, but also due to their incredible brightness and massiveness, considering their age. These galaxies, sitting billions of light years away, are astonishingly bright. They have apparent magnitudes of about 27 in the F200W filter of JWST. We know that sounds pretty technical. But to put it in simpler terms, their intrinsic luminosities are about 100 billion times that of the sun. That's like a hundred billion suns shining together. It's as if each of these galaxies is a cosmic lighthouse piercing through the darkness of space and time. But their incredible features don't stop at their brightness. Let's talk about their mass. These ancient galaxies have stellar masses of about one billion times that of the sun which puts them in the same ballpark as some present-day dwarf galaxies like the Large Magellanic Cloud. However, these galaxies are much smaller in size than modern galaxies, with half-light radii of about 500 parsecs or 1,600 light-years. So they're not as spread out as the galaxies we usually think of. Instead, they're extraordinarily dense, packing a lot of mass into a relatively small area. The ALMA observations also shared some insights about the chemical composition and star formation history of Glass Z12. The presence of an O3 emission line suggests that there's very little dust content in Glass Z12, if not in the early universe as a whole. Now, dust in the cosmic context is formed by heavy elements that are produced by stars and supernovae. So its absence hints that Glass Z12 is essentially a cosmic newborn, it's very young and pristine. Also, the ratio of O3 to hydrogen emission lines suggests that Glass Z12 has a low metallicity. In other words, it has a lower abundance of heavy elements compared to hydrogen and helium. This is consistent with its being from the early epochs of the universe, a time when the cosmos was still finding its feet, so to speak. Now let's delve into the topic of star formation. The O3 emission line also allows astronomers to estimate the star formation rate also called SFR, of glass Z12. In simple terms, the SFR is a measure of how quickly a galaxy is producing new stars. And you wouldn't believe it, but the SFR of glass Z12 is about 100 solar masses per year. That's very high for such a small galaxy. In layman's terms, glass Z12 is like a cosmic factory working overtime, churning out stars with incredible efficiency and speed and likely burning through its gas reserves in a relatively short time span. Now, dive into why the discovery of Glass Z12 and Glass Z10 holds such substantial implications for our understanding of how galaxies formed and developed in the early universe. These galaxies are effectively throwing a curveball at our existing theories and models that we use to explain how cosmic structures develop over time. Let's first look at the theory known as hierarchical structure formation. This idea proposes that the universe is kind of like the world's biggest Lego set. Smaller structures merge together to form bigger ones as time progresses. According to this theory, heavyweight galaxies like our own Milky Way should be the result of lots of these mergers over time and should form later than smaller ones like Glass Z12 and Glass Z10. However, it seems these baby galaxies, though small, have formed as many stars as our present-day Milky Way in a relatively short time. This implies they are incredibly efficient at transforming gas into stars, suggesting that there could be other processes at work in the early universe, such as feedback from supernovae or black holes, or perhaps the initial conditions of the gas were different from what we had presumed. We also have another theory called cosmic reionization. This theory explains how the first stars and galaxies ionized the neutral hydrogen gas that was filling the universe after the Big Bang. We believe reionization occurred between 400 and 800 million years after the Big Bang and was typically attributed to the ultraviolet radiation from the first stars and galaxies. But here's the twist. Glass Z12 and Glass Z10 are so bright and massive 
that they could have made a significant contribution to reionization by themselves, even at earlier times. This suggests that reionization might have been more complicated and variable than we previously thought, and it indicates that our models of how it occurred may need some revisions. These discoveries also mean that there's now a whole new realm of possibilities for exploring the early universe with tools like JWST and other telescopes. We're just scratching the surface of what JWST can reveal since it has only observed a small fraction of the sky so far. Who knows? There might be many more galaxies like Glass Z12 and Glass Z10, or even more distant and exotic ones waiting to be discovered. Plus, JWST can further study these galaxies in more detail, using its spectroscopic capabilities to measure their physical properties and evolutionary histories. This will hopefully help us answer some of the fundamental questions about how the first galaxies formed, how they influenced their environment, and how they led to the diversity of galaxies we see today. However, some people don't think it's all doing us a favor, but making us ask more questions. Let's bring in a 2022 paper by Naidu et al. titled, Two Remarkably Luminous Galaxy Candidates at Z Approximately is Equal to 10 to 12, revealed by JWST. This study suggested that such, such as Glass Z12 and Glass Z10, would be difficult to explain within the standard cosmological model and might require new physics or revisions to existing theories. Let's talk about the mammoth task, that is, the detection and confirmation of such distant galaxies. Imagine trying to spot a single grain of sand at the bottom of the ocean from the surface. That's the level of difficulty we're dealing with here. These galaxies are extremely dim, and there's a ton of matter along our line of sight obscuring them. Plus, accurately determining their distances is a whole other game, and it's not an easy one. This part requires interpreting the galaxy's spectral energy distributions and photometric redshifts, a bit like trying to understand an alien language. These methods essentially translate the light received from these galaxies into meaningful data that can hint at their distance. But, like any translation, it can be influenced by many uncertainties and assumptions. Everything from the models we use, the filters we apply, and the methods we utilize can impact our interpretation. To top it all off, the standard cosmological model, our theoretical framework for understanding the universe, didn't exactly predict such distant and bright galaxies. It's a bit like planning a party for 10 people, and suddenly 100 people show up. It's unexpected and a little hard to handle. According to our model at such high redshifts, the number of bright, luminous galaxies should be low, a lot like expecting to find very few fully grown trees in a newly planted forest. This paper really took our understanding of galaxy formation and evolution in the early universe and gave it a bit of a shake. We now have these two galaxy candidates sitting at the edge of the cosmic frontier, a bit like interstellar explorers, challenging our standard cosmological model and potentially opening doors for new physics or tweaks to our existing theories. Now, these aren't just any old claims the paper is making about them. They've got some compelling reasons and data to back up their bold statements. Firstly, Naidu and the team assert that the detections of these galaxies are solid, not some cosmic flukes or interlopers from lower redshifts just masquerading as super-old galaxies. A few key characteristics of these galaxies play into this confidence. Firstly, both galaxies have a distinctive break or sudden drop in their spectral energy distribution around the 3 micron wavelength mark. If you're scratching your head about what that means, Picture the light from the galaxy as a line graph of different wavelengths. At 3 microns, the line takes a nosedive, indicating less light is coming from the galaxy at those wavelengths. This is consistent with what you'd expect from a high redshift galaxy, due to something called the Lyman Alpha Break. The Lyman Alpha Break is a phenomenon where light with wavelengths shorter than the Lyman Alpha line, a specific emission line from hydrogen atoms, gets absorbed by the neutral hydrogen that's just hanging out between galaxies. This feature is hard for lower redshift sources to fake, which adds weight to the galaxies being at such a crazy distance. Another point in their favor is that these galaxies are like cosmic ninjas below 3 microns. They aren't detected in those bands at all. 
Usually, you'd expect some light from lower redshift sources in this region. The absence of it here rules out the chance that these are quiet galaxies with strong balmer breaks or dust-ridden star-forming galaxies, both of which can sometimes play cosmic chameleons and look like something they're not. These galaxies are also pretty loud, in an astronomical sense, of course. They have a high signal-to-noise ratio in multiple bands above 3 microns, meaning the galaxy signals stand out clearly from the usual background noise. This suggests that we're not dealing with spurious sources or random noise blips, but actual physical celestial bodies. The paper goes on to make an even bolder claim. These galaxies don't just exist. They're causing a stir in the standard cosmological model, enough to potentially necessitate new physics or theory revisions. Here's why. The luminosities of these galaxies are off the charts, with absolute UV magnitudes of around MUV approximately minus 21. This hints at a blistering star formation rate, about 100 times the mass of our sun each year. In the language of the cosmos, that's akin to popping out a new star every few days. This level of stellar productivity is a bit eyebrow-raising for such high redshifts, because the universe was still young and the time for gas to gather and cool down into stars was relatively short. Another intriguing feature is their massive stellar mass, around a billion times that of our Sun. This suggests they managed to form a hefty chunk of their stars in less than 300 million years after the Big Bang, a time frame that seems surprisingly short for such a monumental task. For that to happen, they would have needed to convert gas into stars at an unprecedented rate and have extremely effective feedback processes the ways energy and matter get recycled in a galaxy that we don't fully understand yet. These galaxy candidates also have a very low number density, about one in a million cubic megaparsecs. This makes them incredibly rare, like finding a needle in a cosmic haystack. Based on the standard cosmological model and something called the Schechter function, a mathematical function used to describe the distribution of galaxy luminosities, we'd need a survey area more than 10 times larger than the one used to reasonably expect to find such luminous galaxies at these redshifts. Wrapping things up, the paper suggests that these bright galaxy candidates could either be statistical anomalies or a sign of new physics that could explain their bizarre traits. They even put forth a few hypotheses for their formation. For example, that maybe they're primordial galaxies formed from unprocessed, pristine gas within unusually massive dark matter halos that collapsed early, possibly due to amplified small-scale power, or a particular kind of dark matter known as warm dark matter. Or perhaps they're metal-poor galaxies that have seen multiple cycles of star formation and feedback, formed from recycled gas within less massive dark matter halos. They could also be metal-rich galaxies, formed from gas enriched with heavy elements in intermediate-mass dark matter halos that underwent rapid gas accretion and merger events. Well, these remarkable findings have indeed stirred up a cosmic kettle of questions. In the world of astronomy, it's like we've just stumbled upon a novel that starts in Chapter 3. We've got these incredibly bright and massive galaxies, seemingly popping up out of nowhere just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. How did they form so quickly? How did they accumulate such a colossal amount of stars? And most importantly, how did they become so luminous? All of these mysteries are really challenging our understanding of the universe's early days. This kind of early galactic overachievement even has some scientists scratching their heads and considering alternatives to the traditional Big Bang model. You see, the existence of these ancient massive galaxies doesn't neatly fit the expected narrative of gradual galactic growth and evolution from the Big Bang. As per our current understanding, the universe should have been much more homogeneous and less structured at those early stages. Yet here we have these giant galaxies already hanging around. Brian Cox, the renowned physicist and broadcaster, has finally shared his thoughts on the fascinating discoveries made by the JWST and their implications for the Big Bang theory. He wants to make it clear that he is not suggesting that the laws of physics are being defied or that the Big Bang theory is completely wrong. Instead, he believes that the JWST's findings are shedding light on some unexpected and puzzling observations. 
pushing us to reevaluate our existing theories and models of the universe's evolution. In a captivating YouTube video titled, What Can the James Webb Space Telescope Tell Us About the Universe? Cox dives into the mission of the JWST. He explains that this groundbreaking telescope was specifically designed to seek out the earliest galaxies in the cosmos, which were anticipated to be small and faint. However, to everyone's surprise, the JWST has stumbled upon galaxies that are much more massive, luminous, and intricately structured than anticipated. This discovery leads Cox to emphasize that we must revise our understanding of how galaxies came to be and evolved in the early universe, along with their impact on their surroundings. Also, in an insightful article penned for The Guardian, Webb and the Big Bang, Cox notes that this exceptional telescope is providing us with a wealth of new information, unveiling a universe far richer and more complex than we had ever imagined. He emphasizes that these discoveries do not contradict the Big Bang theory. Rather, they offer valuable insights and raise new questions that demand our attention. Cox reiterates that the Big Bang theory remains a robust framework that explains crucial aspects of the universe, including its expansion, age, composition, and background radiation. The JWST serves as a powerful ally, helping us fill in the gaps in our understanding of post-Big Bang events, such as the formation of the first stars and galaxies, their ionization of neutral hydrogen gas, and their role in shaping the universe's large-scale structure. So, the remarkable discoveries made by the James Webb Space Telescope have ignited a scientific firestorm, challenging our understanding of the early universe and the Big Bang theory. While these findings do not disprove the Big Bang, they urge us to refine our models and embrace the complexity of cosmic evolution. The exploration continues, fueling our curiosity and propelling us toward a deeper understanding of our cosmic origins.